everyone. Well, I should say a very warm welcome back to the doctor. We'll see you now because we're going to transport you today to just one of the hottest places uh, mm -hmm. and such a glorious place. Um, you know, it's starting to get, if you're watching this in, in more or less the time that we're doing the recording, uh, May 2023. In the UK, things are starting to get a little bit warmer, but we're going to take you to a warmer place and get you feeling ready, maybe, for those holiday vibes. Maybe not. You might not want a holiday like this. But anyway, great to have you back. Hope everything's well. And it gives me a tremendous pleasure to welcome one of my favourite authors. Uh, I, I, I love it. You know, everybody who comes on, we have a great conversation, but then you get a chance to meet somebody on here that you know, that you've spoken about their work before, and it's great to come back again. So, Alex, A.A. Chowdhury, thank you so much for agreeing to, to come for a consultation. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be back, Jackie. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And, and uh, you know, just thinking about, we're going to talk about this a little bit, but where you are as a writer, because thinking back, you know, first met you when you were first published and, and now, you know, three books. Uh, and I know we were talking a little bit before, and there's a fourth one coming into being. Yes, so yeah, I'm seeing that now. And yeah. actually, think about it, I had the scribe and the abduction even before these three. So I've been writing a while now. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. This is, yeah, great. So, the final party do you do you have a copy there to hold up and show the yeah, yeah look at that that's beautiful absolutely beautiful the cover is amazing i mean hera canelo did such a good job yeah i couldn't believe it when they sent me the jacket i was like wow <laughs> amazing yeah. how much effort went into it and, and i think as well you know just a shout out to them here and canelo because i know at the moment you know your book included but they are they are publishing such great reads they are you, you, you know i think if you see it's back yeah if it's if it's been published by them you know yeah. Absolutely. You, yeah. It's also a testament to how what good editors they are. I mean, Kashani, and I've been working with um, someone called Jenny as well. She's been brilliant. So they're all such good editors and very receptive to the authors as well, which I think is good. I, yeah, I, I like that notion of the the teamwork rather than being told. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that there's the possibility of that dialogue. Yeah. I like that. So again, if you're with us at the start, when this recording first goes out, the book's out on the 23rd of May, 2023? 25th. 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 Yeah. 25th. Thursday this week. So Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-order. And I would highly recommend that if you are due to jet out somewhere, perfect holiday read, a perfect read anytime, but it's just really got that holiday vibe. That said, I hope your holiday has one of these elements <laughs> in it. Exactly. <laughs> it's more peaceful. <laughs> yeah. So for anybody who's not uh, acquainted with Alex, just to give you a little bit of her background. So she's a former city lawyer. Um, so quite a, a different world, or, or maybe not. I, I don't know. Um, but you did a degree in history at UCL in London. Uh, trained as a solicitor and you worked for several major law firms yeah th three different firms wow yeah that that is quite an experience but you were able to to leave law and as we've said you know now now pursuing that passion and and I think it's something that really comes through in the writing that this is not just an exercise no. you know that that, that I finally found what I my passion and my yeah oh, I suppose it sounds a bit trite but that's that's what it is it's uh -huh. thing in life what I love to do and what I'm passionate about I was not passionate about law but I am passionate about writing about this yeah there was an author on recently uh he, he writes a different different style of, of crime fiction and I was saying to him how you could feel the love yes in the book yeah the love of the writing and that, and I think yeah I think for yourself that passion yeah um that's there and i think it's important that we should finish because your bio says uh, in the book um 
that okay so you, you're in Surrey with your family that you love films all things Italian and a good margarita yeah. uh, and if we get time we'll come back <laughs> and ask about that. but the final party psychological thriller and it's it's what you excel at and to set the scene we've got six friends as it says in the publicity one body and countless lives um so i'd like to pick into probe into those elements but first of all that idea so five books um to your name um where does this book sit for you as an author what, what, when you look at this now after it's gone through all it needs to go through before we receive it in its mm. final published form when you look at it what do you think I think it's more accomplished as a book I think I've definitely learned so much over the last few years I mean I when I finished my first draft of this book it was quite clean actually I, I mean there wasn't my publisher didn't come back with horrendous amounts of sort of structural yeah. legacy. There were more guidelines about what could make it tighter, what yeah. could make it a bit sharper, where I could sort of tie up those loose ends. But I think I've learned so much in terms of um, just simple things like how do I start the chapter? How do I start with a bang? How, how do I try and end each chapter with a cliffhanger that's going to make the reader read on? Yeah. Do I need to keep this bit in is it really you know because in a thrill it's got to be short and snappy it's got you've got to keep turning the pages so you have to think about those type of things um and yeah things like you know when dropping in red herrings at the right time or mm -hmm. dropping in a bit of backstory that might explain what the character is doing at that moment because you want some backstory otherwise you can't really make sense of what yes what the character is doing otherwise it just doesn't make sense without any context so I definitely think about those things when I start writing now which perhaps I didn't in the initial book so much which meant that the editing that was done more in the editing stage yeah yeah thank you for that it, it's always I I'm, I'm always grateful to authors who were able to share about that journey, because I, you know, I say it often and I stand by it that, you know, whilst it's all about writing books, each author has an experience, just like life, you know, our, our lives have commonalities, but but nobody, nobody lives our lives the way that we do. And yeah. to hear about, you know, that you now sit down to write, having understood. Yeah, I think developed. a bit more, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, important in a psychological thriller the characterization is so important so I do think about the characters a lot before I start writing whereas I used to just like start writing and go into it but now I do like do like character profiles before and I'll write about those characters maybe their upbringing and their age and how they speak and how they look and how they dress just to try and differentiate them from each other because I think it's quite boring if all the characters sound the same you might as well not have six characters you might as well have two so, yes. so I think you've got to, to make them interesting for the reader so that they feel like they're listening to a different person yeah yeah and I and again I think that is such you know an amazing skill um because to me there are those layers of as an author you have your voice you know and and to be able I think to get to a point to say I know I know who, you know, I know how I write. And when yeah. people pick it up, even if they didn't see the cover, they'd know it's me because. Yeah. Um, but then to be able to develop, in the case of this book, a final party, mm -hmm. six different voices as well as other, you know, minor characters. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, to ensure that when, when we're reading the story, we know from maybe vocabulary, tone, yeah, that oh it's yeah it's such a body oh it's yeah. yeah and even things like class as well because obviously in the story you have Johnny and Vanessa who were from a very rich privileged background and then you get someone like Nick who's really had to work his way into Oxford and you feel that kind of tension and resentment yeah and it's all about not just the way they talk but the reactions of the other people to those people yes 
yeah that's how you get an understanding of how they protect themselves as well I think yeah yeah and so the, you know that skill on a page because of course if, you know if you were writing for a tv series yeah well the the the, ca the characters would do that we would you know the characters would p p perform that yeah. your writing has to give us that and that's what I mean I think the skill we visualize it in our heads yeah 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 definitely definitely so the premise being you know, these couples that go on holiday for 40th birthday celebration but again I'm always interested in the nuts and bolts before we get to party time or before we get to the, <laughs> the murder <laughs> you started in 2019 and there are sprinkles of like you say this backstory back to 2001 Mm -hmm. and and I you know again I'm always intrigued the choice of those times and working with a split time frame how do you find that is is it is it easy for you to do or do you struggle with the thing of ah must remember it, it was you know it was 18 years ago so therefore you know because you know our world has changed so rapidly oh, yeah, definitely so yeah. I have to I, I manage it pretty well, but I do try to think about it methodically. So I'll think about what was the world like, for example, phones. You yeah. have a phone, I th they think they refer to a phone back in 2001. Obviously, it's just a basic Nokia because that's what you use then. So you would not yes. particularly take um, photos on your phone as much yeah. as you would now or anything. You'd have a normal camera. So that, that actually was something I had to think about in the latter stages of the book. You probably know what I mean by that. Um, yeah so things like that and just the way people maybe dress and I had to think about even at Oxford I had to go back and do some research and say how many students were there at the time and yes. what was the male female ratio then and um, you know was was it a bit more sexist then or not which colleges were taking in f more females than males so I had to think about that type of thing um, and also yes and then Obviously, uh, they are different characters back then to how they were, how they are in 2019. So I had to think about how they developed and over that time and how they might speak a bit differently to the, how they do back then. Um, for example, um, I mean, Johnny's quite arrogant in both time frames. Yeah. <laughs> he's completely full of it back then, whereas I think he's got this dilemma in his head in 2019 that's, you know, weighing him down the guilt. So um, you have to keep, yeah, you have to keep thinking. And also the ages. I kept thinking, oh, how old would they be then? And how old would such and such be? How old would Marcus be? Because even though Marcus didn't go to Oxford, he's, he met them eight years later, but he's slightly older than Vanessa. So I had to think, how old would he have been back then? And you just have, I have to have this chart of different ages and different timelines because it's easy to make. It seems quite a silly mistake, but someone will pick it up. So you need to be careful. I th that, that, exactly so I mean we often talk about the eagle eye reader oh, yes. but but, <laughs> but, I, but I love that you talk about a chart and do, do you do that do you do your chart online or or do you have a great big whiteboard that you I don't I got that asked the other day they said to me you must have this massive whiteboard and I don't I don't work like that at all I just have a piece of paper yeah. write it down there yeah yeah. but I'm quite good at keeping things in my head I don't know if it's my law brain or something I, I wonder oh, seriously it would not surprise me at all yeah. knowing you know how much is needed to be retained yes. for that profession and and to you know so I, it must be and I am extremely envious yeah. um yeah oh. nice one nice one um Great. So we've split time frame and 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 working like that. But but underneath all this is is the notion of secrets mm -hmm. and how damaging keeping secrets can be. Yeah. 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 And so I just wonder um, if we step away from the book, I'm going to put you in a bit of a difficult position here. <laughs> um, if we talk about that idea of is it is it ever wise to keep secrets? Oh, I actually thought about this before. I think there are perfectly legitimate reasons for keeping a secret. I mean, on a very simple level, you could be having a secret party for somebody. Yeah. 
very innocent way and you don't want to spoil their enjoyment or the surprise so you keep a secret from them I think that's a perfectly nice secret to keep from them you might a close friend might um, confide in you that they're very ill and they don't want someone to know because they don't want to hurt they want to spare the pain so that would be another reason you could keep a secret I suppose Um, but I think anything that's really damaging to someone or has long-term repercussions I think that's that's quite selfish in a way because it's you know that the outcome and you can see in my story you know it's come back to bite them in a big way and it's killing all of them you know mentally it's exhausting so um so I think yeah when when because you can have secrets I think without lies yeah so that's party but if you're lying you're deliberately being deceitful I think that's that, yeah, there's that. There's the difference because I very much take you know what you say. Maybe somebody needs to you know just unburden about something and then says, please don't you know I, I don't want people to know about this. Yeah. Um. But if it's that whatever you know, even if somebody gives you you know, the, you know this thing, if it is is going to be of detriment and mm-hmm. and significant detriment to other people, then. Yeah, maybe that's that's the way to to measure things. The secrets in the book um, did were they were, were they the first thing that came to you? You know, as you began to create the book, or or, or were these developed after? You know, during the point. What, what... I think the sort of main secret mm-hmm. was in my mind, but the various because obviously all the characters have various secrets themselves or that which kind of develop from the main plot line so they came to me more as I wrote the book and actually the end the end bit came to me right as I wrote the book as well that final bit but I had to go back and change a bit of things for that so yeah there are a few twists and there aren't there a few twisty secrets so yeah 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 so so, I mean I just think I was going to say, if if you know, readers, listeners, if you if you are lucky enough, you know, to be headed out somewhere warm and sunny, or, or even if you're just in the back garden or in the park this summer, and this is the book you have, can I advise you to make sure that you put the sunscreen on before you start, mm-hmm. uh, and that you have plenty of drinks um, by your side? Because honestly, when you start reading. <laughs> You will forget everything else. And as I say, if you don't do the sunscreen, you'll end up quite toasty. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, the place that you chose to set this, I mean, beautiful. I I, I long to go there. I've never been. Uh, the, the Amalfi Coast. Is it a place that is special to you? Have you been... Was this was it just easy to choose this as a destination? Hundred percent easy. So I'd all, always based all my thrillers in the London area. So I thought, right, next book, I really want to write a thriller based abroad. Um, but it was a no brainer for me. I first went to Sorrento when I was nine with my parents. I'm an only child, and we we're very close, the three of us. Um, and I kid you not, they fell in love with the area, and we ended up going back over thirty times. Wow. And my husband and I got married there in 2007. We had 50 friends and family came over. Over the years, we've made loads of Italian friends. We'd go out for dinner with them. Um, It really is like a home from home. Um, So I can literally smell the streets. I can hear the sounds. I can picture the nooks and crannies and everything. So it was the easiest bit of research I've ever done. (laughs) So, um, yeah. Uh Yeah. You have to go. You have to go. Did you know that it's, <laughs> it, it, it really comes across that that this isn't just you know and 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 quite a legitimate way to do it research on the internet you know places are places and that's fine but the difference of having head knowledge of a place yeah. and having lived heart knowledge of a place yeah. you know you know and I think that infuses the book. 
Thank you. You know, with, with, it was with just a pleasure to transport myself back there. Mm -hmm. I bet it was. You know, despite the grisly circumstances. <laughs> I can assure you nothing like that ever happened. To ever happened. With my 30 trips. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. I, am, I am pleased. I'm pleased to hear that. So it was, yeah, like I say, it, to be transported in that way, which, you know, it's what we love from our fiction. And the, the book club that I'm part of, we do crime fiction in translation. Um, but I think I love it when, you know, when we get, you know, stories from UK authors that take us elsewhere. Yeah. Um, it's really good, it's really good. So, so thank you for that. Um, you did say when we were discussing beforehand um, that you, we don't often do this in the consultation, but I'm really thrilled that you offered to do a short reading for us. Mm -hmm. So do you think that now might be the time to, to indulge? So um, I'll keep it short. So I'm going to read the, the prologue. Okay. Sorrento, Italy, Thursday, 8th of August, 2019. The storm has finally abated. The trees no longer being punched from every angle. The rain less fierce. More of a sedate spitting than a persistent pinballing of hailstones. The wind has died down too. For much of the night, until around 3 a.m., it had howled like an animal in pain. Now there is more of a soft whisper traveling through the air, causing a faint rustling of leaves, the chirping of birds and tittering of insects, just about audible, having previously been drowned out by the thunderous elements. But the sky remains a grim fossil gray, a hue that sits ill with the usually heavenly scenery, bleak and ominous but scarily fitting for what awaits them. The poolside area is soaked. Mammoth-sized puddles of water have gathered in certain patches, causing the officers recently called to the scene to tread cautiously, for fear of slipping underfoot, while a carpet of sodden leaves and stray twigs has layered the normally spotless swimming pool. But there's something else in the water, something that catches their attention as they venture further, a body floating face down, swimming in its own blood. They eye the rest of the villa's inhabitants suspiciously. Six friends had started the week on seemingly good terms, here for a rest and the perfect birthday celebration. But the perfect week in paradise has turned into the holiday from hell, because one of them is dead, one of them is a killer, but which of them here is guilty? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there are so many lines from that that say, yeah, I need to find out. I need, I need to find out about the party. I need to find out who these people are, why that person's dead, who will have done it. Yeah, it's great, just drawn in. And and the I think that atmosphere as well. I mean, anybody who's been in those Mediterranean summer storms, mm. the yeah. power that is there. Um, and the contrast, I love the way you do the contrast between, um, you know, normally this is idyllic, this mm. is paradise, but it's turned into hell and the weather mirroring. Yeah. 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 I think settings are very important. I think that's almost why thrillers at the board can be even more thrilling because they've gone off to this perfect paradise place thinking they're going to have a relaxing time and stressful and it turns out to be anything but, and yet they're trapped there. They're not in their usual surroundings. They're not with, you know, they're often in an isolated location like they are in mine. And you know, in other books we've read where people are in an isolated location and they don't speak the language. So everything about the situation is, you know, it's that much harder to call for help or do anything about it. So Yeah, because unless, you, <laughs> unless you're unless fluent uh, in the, yeah. or, or, or you're very familiar with the area, there's all that uncertainty yeah. around will I be understood will I understand them do I know what I need to do yeah so yeah, yeah it, it, it brings yeah. great elements of you know further uncertainty into a a very unpleasant situation um I I, I just wondered um that idea of so we have you know three couples six friends have gone away for for this moment of celebration which I'll come back to again the notion of the celebration but 
the numbers, you know, the fact that it's couples and it's six. Again, were you clear on that when you started off that this would keep this in a way confined? Because it's because it's a lovely take on the, you know, the locked room mystery. I mean, yeah. it's the locked villa that you know, kind of thing. So to talk to talk to us about your choice of protagonists. Um so I wanted to make them quite different. As I said, we had Johnny and um Vanessa, who they're not a couple, but they've known each other since they were little, they brought up together. But I Marcus and so obviously she met Marcus eight years after um after leaving Oxford. Um and he's a very nice chap. He's very, you know, he's educated, but I think she's he's what she needs because she's been brought up in quite a pretentious way. Her parents sort of just palmed her off to the nanny and, and the childminder was he's had a completely different upbringing he had a very loving mother um I won't say too much about what happened with his family but he just I think she sees a real genuine person in him and I think yeah. that's how they've gelled together um and that's what she sees in him that's why she loves him so much um I think Padma and Nick um See, Padma, she's obviously, she's half Indian, so I wanted to bring that element into it. I'm I'm half Indian, and she has, she's experienced some sort of bigotry as she's grown up, and I had a bit of that when I was, was growing up, um, that existed more in the 70s, 80s, I think, than it does now, but, you know, I did experience that a bit, so there was a bit of me and her from that perspective. Um, and she, she's also not very, from a particularly... Um, posh upbringing and she had to work her way into Oxford and I think that's maybe why her and Nick um, go well together because he also had to sort of work his way up and um, he's he was there for her obviously when she had her unfortunate incident in Oxford so, so that goes well. Um, Johnny and Lana I mean we all know that they they fell in together by accident really <laughs> so um Lana got pregnant. Um, I think I can say that. Can't I? I think yeah. you, I think you can. Yeah. I think that has nothing. You know, we're fine. Yeah. It doesn't. You know, take us too long to who did it. So it's great. Yeah. But um, and she's also she's from a single parent upbringing. She didn't know her father. She's quite um, resentful of the fact because her mother was awful to her. And you can understand that. Obviously, it's made her quite bitter and envious of people who had that secure upbringing. So there's this little bit of jealousy there of Padma who did come from a very secure loving upbringing um yeah so I found that they're all quite different and mm. um, and there's the case of Johnny and Johnny's always thinking did I get into Oxford because my dad who's this Tory MP who just could just you know walk, walk his way into anything and and I think Nick feels quite resentful of Johnny in that respect although Johnny did take him under his wing when he first joined because Nick's a bit of a misfit um, so they have this kind of love hate relationship going, I think. I and I think again, it's what it's what I love what you've done here because in your previous book, The Loyal Friend, you know, it was this group of women. Yeah. You know, and 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 here you give us, you know, the dynamic between guys together as well. Um, and it's it's you know. Yeah, and, and, and the couple's dynamic. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I love the way you were exploring, you know, the you know d d different ways that people relate depending on gender, age, you know, the, 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 the connections between people. It was, it, you know, I really enjoyed seeing what you did with those characters. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so a 40th birthday party. <laughs> Yeah, people who know each other reasonably well, because let's face it, if you've been through university with people, they are the days when you may be at your most vulnerable, when you may be at your most open, um, you know, so it makes me, I look back to mine and think about my students now, and it's a real sort of like warts and all time. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, um, I'm but definitely it, closer to my university friends than I am to my school friends. I lost yeah. touch with most of them actually, but my yeah. university friends, I'm yeah, feel very close to some of them. Yeah, because I think you go through some of those, you know, important lessons, moments, milestones in you life, them, don't you? you yeah. Live, yeah. I mean, I live with five other girls. Yeah. 
in yeah. one in one flat. So yeah. that was some, you know, that was good times. <laughs> we had our fallouts too. <laughs> yeah, because it can't but be can it when you're nature, nature isn't it yeah it, exactly and i think it's how you deal with with that but i wondered about the you know the choice of that milestone birthday 40th like not 30th 35th or 50th you well, went go on yeah tell yeah, us so i wanted enough time to have passed obviously since the incident and i wanted that to have festered over a, a number of years but I also think, you know, people get to a certain age at 40 and they think, oh, you know, I should have done this or I should be doing this or what haven't I done yet? That kind of uh, regret stage and yeah. I have to go and do all this now because, you know, I'm halfway through my life possibly. So I wanted them to have experienced enough life to have thought that. And you've got someone like Johnny, you know, he's, yeah, he's a banker, you know, he's a director, but he feels very unfulfilled. Um, at 30 he wouldn't have done all of that so I wanted to give it enough time for them to have developed his characters to to be you know weighed down by life and obviously Marcus is you know he's a house husband but he was a lawyer before so he's changed his role as well um, and I think because obviously Vanessa um, has a lot of stuff on her mind and it's her birthday so she's come to the point when she feels she needs to let a, let a lot of stuff go <laughs> and um, and be honest with her friends. So I think 40 was the right sort of age for me in that mm -hmm. respect. Great. That's, okay. the, that's obviously Padma and um, Nick are struggling to have children. That's another relevant element of it. Whereas yeah, round about that. You know, yeah. I'm worried about it then, would you? So I, Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah good element at, at that point in people's lives if they are looking to do so if by 40 it's not happened then there's th th again the pressure yeah yeah um so six people multiple narratives i wonder if in in, in your other moments in your life if you if you do tapestry weaving or, or mm -hmm. uh, because you know to you know to have six people's lives thoughts but weaving them together how do you do it Alex <laughs> what's your secret well you maybe don't want to give your secret away and I, and, I, and I get that but but the process in ensuring that you don't you don't lose anyone in 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 this in this weaving together of stories yeah I just I mean before I tried to think about how they're all linked together and how they can be linked to the main secret um and when I finish a chapter off, I normally have sort of some kind of allusion to another character that fits in to the next chapter, as it were. I think there's a bit where Johnny talks about how Lana traps, how she trapped me in the first place. And then you go to Lana and then you go back to a flashback scene. And you see what how they sort of got together. So there's no, honestly, I can't say that there's a, I don't do these spidergrams or anything like that. It just comes to me. Yeah, yeah I've got to be honest. It's not, <laughs> though. I, I wish I could say there's this magic formula, <laughs> but there isn't really. But yeah, it just it is what you create. I do go back and edit a lot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm a real editor. I like I. I mean, I'll just go over it and over it and over it, and sometimes on the thirtieth thing, you'll spot some sort of loose thread, and you think, oh, I must go and change that. So. I, for me, painstaking editing is a must. Okay. Again, I think that's a lawyer legal. I was going to say, I was just about to say, that is such a legal mind. Detail. It's all yeah. about the detail. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, something occurred to me right at the end stage when we were editing. And even my editors hadn't occurred to me. And I said, yes, but what if the reader thinks that? Like, oh, God, I didn't think of that. You're right. So I, this is like, I was like, oh my goodness. So I went back and changed it. Um, and actually, a reader might not have thought about it, but it was just on the off chance that they did. And I thought, yeah. no, I must. You I caught it. Yeah. Out. yeah. Now, before we came on on, on air, um, we're having a wee chat because I'm always intrigued by the quotes that people choose at the beginning of the book. Yeah. And and in the proof copy that I was sent, I'm, I'm blithely reading away because I'm always, you know, it always leaves an impression. Uh, and it was a quote from William Blake saying, it is easier to forgive an enemy 
than yeah. to forgive a friend. And I, I totally, I, I understand that yeah. from life experience, most definitely. But then you tell me, <laughs> ah, but in the copy that is to be published, this That's has changed. Yes. Yeah, come on, tell us. Well, tell us what it's changed to, and and the you know the the decision to make that change. So it's changed to. Um, it's a quote by a Roman philosopher, um, Lucius Annaeus Seneca, um, from four BC to sixty five AD. And it's every guilty person is his own hangman. Whoa. Do you know, I think that sounds even more ominous. Yes, that was the intention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honest, because then going into the prologue that you, you know, that you kindly read for us. Yeah. With that dark sky that fits so well as mm. opposed to this the, the Blake quote even feels like just looking at something from a distance yeah you know like looking back whereas that you know the, the the quote you know that you read for just now that that's powerful it, I mean the Blake one was very pertinent too in, in the terms of the fact that obviously you know it's you expect your enemies to behave badly to you to, to betray you to lie to you but when your friends do it it's hard to forgive so yeah. the potential fallout and the desire for revenge can be bigger so that was the whole thinking about that too but yeah we just thought this one was a bit more uh what's the word just on point with the action as you said that was just about to happen and it's i yeah. guess it's the thing that that feeling of um, if you're guilty, sort of the shame and the guilt weighs you down. So you end up almost feeling destroyed by that guilt and the shame. And that was a th that, that was the thing. If you don't confess it, it's just going to, over time, weigh on your shoulders mm -hmm. year after year and after year until you can't take any more and something's going to happen, something's going to blow up. That was the idea. That fits wonderfully. That fits wonderfully. Yeah, yeah. Now, little... Uh, little points in the in the story as it goes on well you know as 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 the tension rises you make use of social media instagram uh, responses to instagram posts or anonymous text messages and, and i think you do that i mean that again you know many of us are you know linked to that world and just get the thing of something popping up that's erroneous, menace, threaten. It's a beautiful way, I think, to bring menace in to, you know, into the story. What about yourself? Not that I'm not saying that you would be sending yourself sending threatening messages or Instagram <laughs> comments to people, but are you do you do you inhabit social media much? I do, as you probably know. <laughs> Being an author, I think it's sort of inevitable these days. I'm on everything. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp and trying to get on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. But I'm absolutely <laughs> rubbish. So I've got the time. I don't know how people have the time. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to be more on TikTok, but I just, I really can't manage it all. Um, but yes, I mean, it's a massive part of people's lives. So I think if you didn't, include that in some way in this type of book it, it would look out of place I think people relate to, it's all about being able to relate to it isn't it and I think yes yeah book and they could relate to that thing oh, that could be me and you know that I was I was hacked last you know which was an absolutely horrendous experience so I know that feeling of seeing something that's anonymous and you don't know who it is is the scariest thing it's absolutely frightening yeah, be, be, be just thinking, you know, if if the if the book had been set for the back in time, so the idea of and and you know and, and there's other authors, you know, writing in previous time periods, you know, that the sending of the anonymous letter, mm. you know, with the cut out letters and and things like that. But I, I I totally agree with what you say that for many readers, you know, that our lives and how linked we are with social media, not everyone, I, you know, I, I totally understand that people, you know, for whatever reason, but for many of us, that sense of, oh my God, you know, 
yeah, somebody can do that to one of my posts that I put up. I'm, you know, I'm away at a festival. I, I put something there, and people say, "Yeah, but if people knew the truth about you, or you know, oh, it's, it's frightening." And that's the thing about social, like everybody sees it. Yeah, you can't yeah. undo it, really. Yeah, it's just it, ramifications are awful. And it's just yeah. horrible. Whereas a letter is just a private letter, isn't it? No one's yes. going to see that except you. Yeah. Yeah, so that yeah, the way the ripples that go out from that. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, do you know it is such a joy. I mean, even if we even if we weren't speaking about this amazing book, even if we were just having time together, it's so lovely. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, but the fact that we can celebrate, you know. Yeah. Oh this, 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 yeah, yeah. See, so my proof coffee doesn't have your lovely name, and yeah, but yeah, but but I have the glorious image, which, yeah, yeah. So I've got one last question for you, if that's all right, um, because I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you have a a book in the making to get back to, and 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 presumably the whole, you know, the whole celebration you know the different events around the last party yeah pretty busy, pretty busy I, exactly yeah. exactly which is great nervous, you know it's always like oh people are gonna like it generally you know you get a bit nerve-wracking there's listen, always like a one or two you know of, of course <laughs> you, uh, hey, listen you, you as a writer <clears throat> you can never you can never you know appeal to everyone no. it, it's impossible yeah. So somebody's going to say they didn't like it, or it's not for them. Or, so that's fine. Yeah. But honestly, you must celebrate what you have achieved. In, as I say, to me, it's this notion of weaving these stories, and mm -hmm. that is, yeah, yeah. So just go celebrate. You know, you 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 created this. But I have to ask this last question, and it's a bit playful. So indulge me. Um going through it and, it and it turns out that for one of the characters there was a time when the devil wears prada that film glorious film starring meryl street it, it, it was an important film to them yeah. did you choose this because it's an important film to you i love that film i think it's a brilliant film that's why it came to mind but i thought it i thought it just perfectly because that was a scene between padma and lana wasn't it and i just yeah. I just thought it perfectly encapsulates sort of the bitchiness that Lana was trying to get across at that point. Um, so yeah, it just, that was the obvious choice to me when it, it came up. It's a brilliant movie. Really. Yeah, very much so. I think, you know, I think, you know, Stanley Tucci, Emily Blunt, I think the, you know, just the performances, you yeah. know, as well as the iconic performance from Meryl Streep. Yes. It's just, it's a, yeah, beautiful, I mean, well-made film. But, but very much. Few people, I think, won't have heard of that, and if any, it's uh, very yeah. iconic. Yeah, glorious. Alex, it just remains for me to say congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and Thank all... Say yeah, nice things about it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 when 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 a book, you know, when a book transports you like that, when when you have your characters that you think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for this character, or. Oh, you, you know, you're just a pain. <laughs> yeah, and and again, because of our different backgrounds, we will react differently yeah. to these six characters. There will be those we identify with. Uh, there'll be those that we just think, I wouldn't have gone on holiday with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and not because you could be a menacing killer, um, <laughs> but just because you're not my kind of person. And and yeah. again, I I like the way you. You, in in a sense, is you you play with our prejudices, you know, uh, and that's that's another facet I found interesting about the book. Mm -hmm. Alex, I I hope we get a chance to to do this face to face. Uh, by that I mean in real life, because here we are face to face on screen uh, at some point. Um, but but <laughs> again. You know, thank you for our time together, especially for for reading. You know, giving us that glorious taste. Um, readers, listeners, you have your twenty twenty three, well and beyond summer read, please. The final party, um, glorious stuff, Alex. 
two days. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you <wanna know. laughs> yeah. I see you soon, Alexia. Yeah? Thank you so much, Jackie. I've really enjoyed it. A pleasure. A pleasure. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.